A new sport has been introduced at John Babst. Wrestling has taken off at John Babst. And now let's join Coach Joe Bowen, who has a special awards presentation. What I've asked for today is some alumni guys to come back to support the program. They've done a great job. This is um, Jeff Sanford. <laughs> Joe Fernandez. <laughs> Joe Leonard. And Ryan Porter from years past program. Um, one of the things that had happened um, last year, um, Sanford got his 100 wins, and they they was an oversight. He didn't get his 100 win shirt. Uh, it's something me as a coach I've always valued. Uh, so the booster said yes. Let's absolutely correct that wrong. Um, what I'm going to do is put this down for a minute and ask Joe to present it to him. The other thing that had brought to my attention was um, one of the years the books had gotten lost, so it, trying to go back and look at where kids were, I, I kind of found an error, um, and we're going to correct that today. Um, these aren't my kids, and this does this to me all the time. It's my sport, guys. Um, Joe Fernandez, we were able to go back and get about 104 wins. So he is also going to get his 100 wins on the show. Guys, the Boosters Club here is just phenomenal. The parents, it's been one of the best coaching assignments for me personally. I really thank you guys. Maria? <laughs> guys, she does a great job here. Cecilia? Guys, thank you. I, I use you two all the time. Thank you. Now, let's just go ahead and get to what we're here for, guys. Let's get some wrestling in. Congratulations to those two wrestlers on their 100th victory. Quite an accomplishment. And once again, thank you, Joe Bowen, for those presentations. What better way to kick off a playoff run during a football season than with a good old-fashioned pep rally? We're going to take you now here at halftime to last night's events where Bruce Chamberlain, one of the many dedicated John Bapps boosters, provided this footage of last night's event. <laughs>
Airport Security Uniformed Security Service with offices at 185 North Main Street in Brewer. Give them a call at 991-9621. Security you can trust. Workers need jobs. Employers need workers. How are they going to find you? Page Employment Permanent and Temporary Placements Maine's first employment service matching generations of Maine's people to jobs since 1945. When quality matters, give Da Vinci Signs a call at 848-2234 or visit them at 21 White Pine Avenue, Route 2 in Herman, or you can check them out at davincisigns.net. For all your canvas needs, go to Bangor Canvas, where they've been doing canvas better since 1990. Give them a call at 941-6453 or visit them at their new location at 100 Dowd Road in Bangor. Welcome back to Cameron Stadium as we get ready to start the third quarter. We'll send things down to our head official, Tim Kinney, as the captains are going to meet at field, midfield once again. Guys, I'll make it really quick. Good first half. Excellent first. I'm sure you want the football, right? Yes, go on what you like to defend. You want to defend that goal? Okay, put your backs around. Baps, if you'd come around here. So that's good enough. Start the second half. John Baps will receive at this end of the field. Gentlemen, good luck to both teams. And that was quick and to the point. As Tim Kinney usually tries to keep things for both teams. Baps will receive the ball here to start the second half in this third quarter, which is brought to you by Bangor Canvas. And Lucas, if you're Baps, what type of changes did you make at halftime for Coach O'Connor? Well, I think, uh, I think they're doing a great job on defense right now. I don't think you change much on defense. They've done a, uh, except for a few plays, uh, they've really done a good job bottling up the Foxcroft offense on, and on offensively for Baps. I think you just got to put the ball in, in the hands of, of Derek Smith. Get get your playmakers involved in the passing game. Get Hass involved. Get Weatherby involved, and let Smith make plays for you. Uh, that's where they've had success uh, today on offense is when they've thrown it, they've kind of spread it out a little bit. I think they got to get try that a little bit more. And uh, on defense, just keep doing what you're doing because you're because you're doing a great job. And for Foxcroft, you went into halftime 14-14, better than where you were last time you met this team. And if you're Foxcroft and you're Paul with you, what are you doing different? Well, I think if you're Foxcroft, you just get to, uh, on defense, uh, I think you get a key on, key on Smith. He's the guy that, that's been making plays for them. Offensively, though, try to try to mix things up a little bit. They've, they've been kind of playing in vanilla with their play calling, running up the middle. I think they get to try to open up a little bit and try some new things on offense. So Smith would be back to return. It's going to be fielded by Weatherby up across the 40, pushed out of bounds at the 42. So now this Baps offense, which had great success late in the second quarter, Coming back on the field, Derek Smith, the senior quarterback, will lead the charge. At halftime, I was running through the player bios, and I couldn't help but be very impressed by uh, Jason Pulley, Stephen Kelly, uh, Leighton so Sovis, and Shane Haas, all citing their favorite uh, professional football team as the Miami Dolphins. That's just very impressive uh, on their part. That's just a smart football fan. Smith is going to keep it himself now. Up to about the 44. Gain of about one on the play before being brought down. The quarterback draw to start things immediately for back. Your favorite team's the Dolphins, right, Adam? No. Sadly, it's not. Sadly, very, it's very sad that, it's, that they are not your favorite team. And Smith now lining up in the shotgun formation with four wideouts. And it's going to go back down to three here. Handoff is to Huckstein. Up the middle, up across the 50. Going to be close to a first down, and they're going to mark him down at the 48. This is a good offensive set for, for Baps to come out in right now because it, 
when you're coming out in the shotgun, it keeps the defense on the heels. They don't know if, you can, if you're going to pass it. They don't know if you're going to run. It keeps them off balance. It lets you do more on offense, and uh, it spreads them out more. So when you do want to run, there's not as many guys in the box, and you're going to have more success running the football that way. And off to Weatherby. First down, and up across the 44, brought down at... The 45. Great run. 44, 45. Good tough run there by Weatherby. Just gets the ball. Doesn't try to do too much. Uh, knows he has to get just a few yards to pick up the first down and keep the chains moving. Just picked it up, put his head down, and picked up the first down with full steam ahead. That was, a, that was a very good run. One of the few times here, Foxcroft has allowed a first down allowed on a run. Most of Bap's first downs have come in the air. And now they line up with that I formation. Smith looking to throw again. Throwing across the field to Fogler. And that's going to be incomplete. Well, he had the right idea right there. He looked left initially. He looked to uh, Haas, looked, at, looked off the, the wide out to the, looked off the defender on, on the right side, and he had a man open on the, on the right when he came back after looking off. He just rushed his throw a little bit. He's going to take his time, set his feet. He's got the arm. He's got the accuracy. Just be patient back there. And that ball is slippery, too, so that, that could have played into it. He's continued the tradition, though. He's looking at Haas first before deciding what to do here. He's using his eyes very well. Smith to throw again, throwing to Weatherby, almost picked off. As almost intercepting that one is number 77, Ryan Olmstead. And this, this John Bapp's offensive line, for the most part today, is doing a good job giving Smith time when he does drop back. He's been able to sit back there comfortably, look through his progression, make his reads, and uh, give credit to the line because they're, they're letting him sit comfortably back there. He's just going to set his feet and make a good throw. Game brought to you in part by Page Employment. Matching people to jobs since 1945. Need a job, no fees. Need employees? Call Page, 991-9615. Voted Bangor's number one staffing agency for years and running. And we have a whistle and a flag, and I'm assuming this one's going to go on BAPS. False start. Right to the snap. Dead ball. False start. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. And it was on BAPS. And that's going to back him up five yards. Now, this could change the play calling just a little bit, as now you're looking at a third and 15. So Smith will come back under center here. Shotgun formation with a man in the backfield. Weatherby going in motion. Dropping back to pass is Smith looking. Airing it up down the field to Huckstein. And that ball is going to fall out and incomplete. He had his man, and he put the ball in a pretty good spot. He put it where only his guy could get it. Uh, it wasn't a dangerous throw at all. It was a good, it was a good throw right on the money. He, uh, Huckstein a little bit, had a little bit of uh, trouble with his footing there. It looked like he slipped a little bit and couldn't hold on to the ball. But it was a safe throw, smart throw. Uh, unfortunately for Babs, they weren't able to convert, but it was a good play call. Now uh, Foxcroft's going to have a chance here to get this punt and try to get some offensive rhythm going. They really haven't had, a, had anything going all, all game. Smith, a good punt. That's going to take a bounce roll inside the five. Fielded at the one. A flag is thrown, wrapped up, and brought down at the two-yard line. But a flag, and I'm thinking it's going to be a block in the back yeah, on Foxcroft. And the block didn't even matter anyway. You got tripped up at the one. So, so uh, Babs doing a great job again on the coverage units to uh, not allow Foxcroft the big return. We'll see what head official Tim Kinney has to say. And now where will this ball get spotted? During the run, illegal block in the back on the return team. Half the distance to the goal, first down white. And a half distance goal, that ball's gonna be spotted at the one. So very dangerous territory here for Foxcroft. And you gotta wonder, they should have just let that punt go because it would have gone into the end zone. That would have been, but that, yeah, that would have been the smart, the smart decision there. Just let it get, go in the end zone, get the touchback. Now they're pinned against their own end zone in a tough spot. And Babs can bring the heat right here, try to put pressure on them and maybe get a safety. They bring the heat, wrapped up, brought down, and it looks like he's gonna be brought down in the end zone. But they're gonna say he's spotted at the one. So champion. They, they, uh, to me, it looked like he was a safety. Uh, yeah, they gave him his forward progress. He got out of the end zone to the one-yard line. Uh, it, it was a close play. Um, Babs did a good job getting to the swarm into the ball here, getting the hats on the football before he could really get find a, a seam there. But they're going to give him his forward progress there. Usually at the end zone, the close this close to the end zone, the refs are very careful to see uh, for that forward progress just to make sure he did, he did get out of the end Fox zone. Foxcroft stacking that offensive line again here. Hand off this time. It's a fake. 
Stroud will throw, pass completed to Witham, and Witham gonna be wrapped up and brought down, but they're gonna spot the ball at the four. Now, if you went by forward progress, the ball should be spotted a little bit further at like the six or seven yard line. And that will bring up third down here. Gives them a little bit of breathing room, but not that much. It's a third down situation still. I'm anxious to see if they come out aggressively here or, or a little bit conservative, I don't know. You don't want to try to do anything that will, that will backfire for a, for a safety or loss of yards, but at the same time, you want to try to pick this up. So third and seven from the four. Handoff, champion, far side. Breaks up across the five, wrapped up, brought down at about the nine or 10 yard line. Not gonna be enough for a first down. And now we'll see Baps probably send their special team unit on. Same with Foxcroft, I would think. I would highly doubt that uh, they would, uh, the risk it here really wouldn't make much sense in a tie ball game. Well, they're gonna go for it. Wow. Fourth and one from the 10. Big play call here for Paul Withy, and you gotta be thinking that there's no way he was gonna go for it, but he is gonna go for it. Fourth and one from the 10. Snap, and we have a flag thrown, and this looks like it might be on Foxcroft. Yet another false start. And that one was on Foxcroft. And that's too bad for Foxcroft because it looked like they would have converted that. Champion had a seam to run through there. They just, once again, they jump quick. It's been their, the problem for them all game is the false start penalties. They've had an abundance of them. I don't understand why. And it, and it just negated what would have been a first down on fourth. Baps brought the heat. Ball's gonna take a bounce at the 30 and keep rolling and rolling to the 38. So Babs offense will take the field. We'll take a break with it. John Babs, Foxcroft tied at 14. You're watching the page deployment. Seaboard Security, game of the week. Welcome back to Cameron Stadium for some playoff action. Babs and Foxcroft. Smith looking to throw, throwing to Hochstein at the 40, 35, up across the 30, still going, and wrestled out of bounds at the 25, 24, the yard line for Babs. Babs in the traditional purple, and Foxcroft in the white. Good poise by Smith there in the pocket. Not getting too flustered as their body's flying all around him, defenders in his face. This does a good job moving around in the pocket, buying himself some time, and eventually just dumping it off to uh, to his back out of the backfield, checking it down to Hochstein, who picks up a positive yardage in the first down. So good play by Smith to just remain calm in the pocket. Hand off Weatherby, up the middle, up across the 20, and wrapped up and brought down. And sometimes it's what you don't do that that really helps you out. He didn't, he didn't try to force something down the field on that last play. He just took what they gave him, didn't try to do too much when there wasn't anything there, and he... And you can see when you dump it off and you check it down, good things can happen. He picked up the first down on that play. And inside of seven minutes and 30 seconds here in the third quarter. Babs really controlling the ball here so far in the second half. Smith pitches to Weatherby on the far side, giving Chase his Olmstead. He can't get it to 20, 15, hits the 10, cuts back the five, into the end zone. Touchdown, Billy Weatherby. But there is a flag on the play. And we'll see what the flag is. And it is on Babs. Tim Kinney says down here. during the run, holding offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, repeat second down. So 10 yards from the spot of the foul, now that penalty happened deep in the territory because they didn't lose much yardage on that. In all actuality, second and eight now, Smith shotgun formation, Weatherby going in motion, dropping back to pass now, looking, 
looking, gonna keep it himself and gonna run. Wrapped up and brought down on the play. Tackle there made by number 65, Andrew Larson, a co-captain for this Foxcroft team. But there is a flag on the play on the again. Flag on the play again here. Let's see what this one is. I think Weatherby uh, got, a, got an early start there on that snap. Might have been illegal motion. Illegal motion, offense, moving prior to the snap. Penalties declined, third down. And penalties declined, that's gonna bring up third down now. Four back, four wideouts, empty backfield, four backs. Smith looking at the defense, Weatherby going in motion. And there's the snap, no flag this time. Airing it out down the field, the weather be picked off. Pass is intercepted, Chase Hutchins up across the 30, two flags thrown, the 40, and pushed out of bounds. And two flags have been thrown now. Looks like he was looking for uh, Weatherby over the middle there. Weatherby wasn't looking when he released the ball. Just a miscommunication between the wideout and the receiver there, and it results in an interception. Anytime you throw it across the middle of the field, there's a risk that that will be intercepted especially when it's overthrown like that. And penalties on Foxcroft, the block in the back. But that's a big play for Foxcroft because it takes points off the board. Uh, uh, Babs was knocking on the door, getting ready to punch it in, and, and Foxcroft just comes up with a huge turnover there. That's a play on defense that can kind of swing momentum. And we're still in a tie ball game here. Uh, I think Babs has, has really controlled the time of possession and the whole momentum of the game, but it's still 14 to 14. You know, and, and to make a play like that deep inside your own territory, that's a big play for Foxcroft. That's the kind of thing that can swing momentum. So 6.58 to go here. Third quarter, both teams have now turned the ball over once. Come on, and we'll see what happens here with the Foxcroft offense taking over at their own 13-yard line. Man in motion. Hand off, champion, hand off to Huxley. He's wrapped up and brought down on the play by number two, Chase Huckstein. So Chase Huckstein ch tackles Chase Hutchinson. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, I'm glad I'm not the play-by-play -play on that one. That's a mouthful to spit out there, but uh, yeah. Hutchinson and Huckstein. Uh, tackle Chase. Now we're looking at a second and 13 from the 10 yard line for Dover Foxcroft. Stroud coming back under center here with two in the backfield with Champion and Witham. Handoff, Witham fakes. Stroud airing it up deep down the field and that pass is incomplete intended for Hutchinson. Coverage on the play there, covered tightly by Chris Fogler of Baps. Yeah, that was good coverage down the field. Didn't really give him any any area to throw the football. Uh, they, it was tight coverage. They tried another little pump and go, another double move. Baps was not biting on this time and uh, did a good job staying at home. We have done a lot of games this year, but right now I am saying this game right now has got to be by far the best game we have seen all year. Certainly, and it's very evenly played. We're tied up in the third quarter here. Both teams are very evenly matched. It's been a lot of big plays, a lot of excitement. It's a good one. Stroud looking to air it out, wrapped up, and brought down at the one-yard line. This, this defense right now for John Babs is tough. It's tough to move the ball on a defense like this, especially you know, when you're in a third and long, an obvious passing situation, and you've got a defensive line that's playing as well as they are. They're rushing the pass as well. They're getting, they've been in Stroud's face all day long when he's trying to throw. He's making it very tough on this offensive throw, and it all starts up front. This defensive line for John Babs has been playing out of their minds today, both against the run and the pass. Fourth and 21, and now the punter's going to be careful. His heels will be on the back line, and if I'm Babs, now I'm bringing the heat on the block here. And they are. Weatherby's coming in. A punt. Going to go out of bounds at about the 37-yard line. And Baps will take over. Take a break. You're watching the page employment. Seaboard Security Game of the Week. 35-yard punt out of bounds. 37-yard line. Ladies and gentlemen, the John Babs versus the MCI Hawks Cup team is scheduled to air on the front water team at 10 9. Welcome back to Cameron Stadium for the 
Eastern Main semifinal game, the John Babs Crusaders and the Dover Frogscroft Pony. Pass intended for Fogler, it's gonna be incomplete, and Smith showing no signs of being affected by that interception last time out as he's throwing already. He comes out and he throws a good pass there on the hitch. It was a good play on first down to call because the corner was giving cushion. He was giving a little, some yardage on the outside, so they, they decided to attack that way with a hitch route. Uh, it was a good throw. You're just going to make that catch. And still, they're giving a lot of cushion on the outside there. Just get about a seven or eight yard cushion to throw the football. Handoff, Weatherby, Scudder steps up across the 35. Three flags have come flying in now. I saw one, the second one came in, and the third one was a little late. I think one of them is a face mask. I think Weatherby got his face mask ripped. And we'll see what the eventual ruling is going to be here on the play. We have a holding on Baps. We have a personal foul face mask on Dover, so those penalties should offset. Holding against the offense. Personal foul, grabbing the face mask. Here, yeah. penalties will offset, replay second down. And they'll replay second down. This game also brought to you in part by Seaboard Security, security you can trust, providing uniform security officers to main companies since 1988, and quality jewelers. Penobscot Plaza, downtown Bangor, specializing in fine jewelry. Smith fakes the hand off to Weatherby, he's gonna keep it to himself. Throws it to the outside, and that pass intercepted. A big pick there by Ian Champion, and that's the second interception on back-to-back -back possessions for John Babs. I'm really, this is really interesting to see how this whole, this third quarter is playing out right now. Babs has had the ball the majority of the third quarter inside, inside Foxcroft territory too. Uh, despite that, Foxcroft has come up with two big plays, two big turnovers, and they really haven't got much going on offense either. So this is, this is a defensive struggle in the second half here early on. Uh, not a whole lot of movement of the ball. The ball's kind of staying in the same spot of the field. You know, this, the, between the 20 and the 40 yard line at this end. So neither offense is getting much going, but both defenses are playing really well. They say offensive win, offense wins games, but defense wins championships. And this has been a battle of two tough defenses out there today. Stroud pitches it off to champion on the outside. He picks up a big block and the breaking free from the block is Weatherby. And he's able to make the tackle. I really think he was playing a little, I don't know what you want to call it, but uh, well, I don't know where I'm going with that one, but he was he played something on the outside. Um, you know, the, the block came, he it acted yep. like he was slipping, and he slipped yep. and was able to make that tackle. Possum, there he we kinda, go. He, he played possum on the kinda, play. Yeah, he kind of baited him into that cut there, and he, he fooled the, the running back a little bit, and he did a good job to make that tackle. So good job there by Billy Weatherby. And then there was a hold on the play. So that's going to back Frockscroft up once again. And when you're, when you're really not getting any production on offense, you can't afford penalties like this. You've seen it all game. And Illegal block in the back. Offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. You just can't keep moving backwards as an offense when, you already have, when you're already struggling as is. You're just not going to have success when you keep getting these costly penalties. And that's a big penalty. That's a 10-yard penalty. So now you're looking at first and 20 so with an offense that hasn't had much success. So the big crowd that has gathered here at Cameron Stadium have been played into a perfect game here. 14 to 14, your score. Man in motion is Hutchinson. That pass batted down at the line by Chris Desmond. And I'm gonna say this, Desmond is having quite the game for himself today. He's, he's done a good job rushing the passer against the run and now gets his six foot three frame up there, he gets in the passing lane of Stroud, puts his hands up and bats that pass down. He's just firing up their whole defense. They're kind of feeding off him today. He's been the focal point of that defensive line. He's making up plays all over the field, and we just saw it right there. The six foot three, 240 pound junior lineman for bat. And Stroud hands off the champion. He's not gonna go too far this time. Wrapped up Tim Armistead, as well as Chase Huckstein in there on the tackle. And Baps pushing Foxcroft back further. I think so far in this quarter, I believe, Foxcroft has lost more yards than they have gained. Bapp has gained quite a bit of yardage, but has had two turnovers. And well, well, I think you're right, and it's a testament to this Foxcroft defense that they've that they've been put in a bad position all 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 the second half so far. Their offense isn't getting much going. 
they've they've been with their backs against the wall and they haven't let, surrendered any points to bats and then their offense really has not been effective at all and they get to try to find something uh, that they can go to the rest of this game third and 22 Stroud airing it up deep down the field and they beat him again Leighton so uh, excuse me it's Josiah Richard with it and he beat him with that same pattern again just go, stop, and go. And Stroud just rolled out to his left to buy himself a little bit of time. He's had a lot of pressure from this John Babs defensive line, so he buys himself time, does a good job right there, and does an even better job just throwing an absolutely perfect pass deep down the field, throws a bullet right on the money. And I was just talking about, they're going to try to find something that they can go to and look to. Their running game has not been effective at all. Their offensive line's kind of struggling in the run game a little bit. So, you know, they go to a pass right there. they got a man wide open, and Stroud just delivers a perfect pass on the pitch and catch for a big game. I think that they can, they're can they going to try to utilize that a little bit more for uh, to be a little more effective on offense. Handoff. It's to Hutchinson. Up across to the 20. Spinning or wrapped up and brought down at the 18. And the old saying is, it, fool me once, shame on, on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And it was the same exact pass route, and they've got them both times on it now, and both times for big yardage. Big yardage, big plays on both. That's how the saying goes, unless you're President Bush. He, uh, he struggles with that saying a little bit, but you're right. They fooled him two times on that play, and uh, Stroud's just done a good job with that. Pump fake, get the, get the cornerback to bite on that, and then go downfield. It's an easy, easy pitch and catch after that. And then on that play there, the little crisscross counter play, catches the defense off, off guard. It's, they're mixing up their play call now. It's not as plain and, and boring as it was. They're, they're doing stuff to get this Babs defense kind of off guard. First and 10 from the 29, from the 19, excuse me. Handoff is going to be given to Witham, wrapped up and brought down. Leading the charge on that one is Taylor Dubé. It's and it's obvious that you're just not going to you're not going to be effective on offense running against this John Babs against the front seven of this John Babs defense right now. They're just too solid right now against the run. The linebackers and defensive line are doing a great job. So you got to try to get to the outside. You got to try to maybe throw the football a little bit more. But running it up the running it up the middle is just not going to do it. Well, no question, Foxcroft is in four down territory as they face a second and 14. Throwing near side pass batted down. Great job there on the line. Max Andrews already has one interception on the day for John Babs. Also, this game being brought to you by Carefree Windows and Siding Company. Not just your siding, window, and roofing needs. They cover all construction and Bangor Canvas. Covering all your canvas needs, 42 Dowd Road and Bangor. And Da Vinci Signs, when quality matters, located in the Pinewood Business Park in Herman. Big couple plays, big big plays coming up here for uh, for Foxcroft. This is the first time they've had anything going on offense this half, and now they really need to try to capitalize on this drive. Third and 14, a whistle, and Coach O'Connell wants to take a timeout. We'll take the timeout too. 2.22 to go here, third quarter, 14-14, your score, Baps and Foxcroft. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to Cameron Stadium, the John Babs Crusaders and the Dover Foxcroft Ponies. 14 to 14 is your score here in the third quarter. Third and 14 for the Ponies. Stroud in a shotgun formation. Chamberlain giving chase, and there's Desmond and Chamberlain wrapping them up for the sack. I just can't say it enough times the way this John Babs defense is playing. They're rushing the quarterback. Every time he drops back, they get a they get a couple defenders in Stroud's face. They're not giving him any passing lanes to throw to. And against the run, they're just as solid as can be. If, they, if John Babs is going to win this football game, it's going to be because their defense brought him there. 
do you think the crowd got into it after that sack? <laughs> I think so. Fourth down now, and they are going to punt. The punter slips on the kick, but still gets away a good kick. That ball's going to come dead inside the 10 yeah, at the 9-yard line. Good punt and a good bounce there after the good roll. They got a good roll. So Chris Desmond and Tyler Chamberlain combined for the sack of Stroud. And now the offense is going to come on the field. Now the offense has had back-to-back -back possessions with an INT. So we'll see what they do here this time around as they don't want to have a turnover here. Will they throw or will they keep it on the ground? And they've now turned the lights on here at Cameron Stadium as it is starting to get a little darker out. In a game that has been a defensive battle, 14 to 14 your score. Smith coming back under center with Huckstein and Weatherby in the backfield, Fogler and Haas in the wide receiver position. It's Weatherby on the near side, the 20. Up across the 25, still going 30, 35, the 40, 45, hits the 50. He's got open field, the 40, 35, 30, one man to beat. He's going to do it, 10, 5, a 91-yard touchdown run. No flags, Billy Weatherby. Unbelievable. I, I don't need, that was just an unbelievable run by Weatherby. He hits the, he, he he just breaks through the line, he cuts to the outside, makes a few guys miss, and then and give credit to the, his blockers downfield. This jump, this, this is a perfect example of team football on this play. Weatherby breaks out, and then he has three or four blockers down the field, blocking in front of him, doing their job, hustling downfield. Basically what they did is they sprinted 90 yards full speed and threw blocks the whole way. That's just a, that's just a team effort completely by John Babs. And it, and it wasn't even the wide receivers that was blocking. It was the O-line that was carrying it down the field. Just an amazing, that's an all-around team effort. Weatherby got it in the end zone, but give credit to the whole team on that play. Just an unbelievable play right there. Extra point is up, and that one is good, and that would have been good from about 40 yards out. With that, we'll take a break. Babs, 21, the Ponies, 14. You're watching the Page Employment Seaboard Security Game of the Week. Welcome back to the Page Employment Seaboard Security Game of the Week. 21 to 14, your score after the 91 yard touchdown run by Billy Weatherby. And now the Crusaders are on top in this one. Bap set to kick. And back deep to return is Bowden and Hutchinson. Bowden will return at the 12, up across the 20, hits the 25, turns on the Jets at the 30, 35. Try to cut back, and he's going to be pushed out of bounds at the 40-yard line. So 111 to go in this one. Baps on top, 21 to 14. And as we were talking about that run that Weatherby had, the offensive line was down there. They were just telling Weatherby, oh, hey, come over to me. I got your block. Come over to me. Yeah. It was, they were directing the traffic and a great job by that offensive line. And I, I told you uh, when we were at the break, Weatherby could have pretty much walked in the last 20 yards. He just had three defenders to the, I mean, three blockers to that one defender. And like you said, just directing him where to go. And that was just a beautiful play. Beautiful play on all, on all aspects for John Babs. And now... Foxcroft will try to answer back. Witham and Champion in the backfield. The handoff to Witham, the 40. Spinning still going across the 45, down to the 47-yard line. Witham's a, a nice, a big, tough runner. He, he checks in at 6'1", 235, so he's tough to bring down. He's a tough runner. That's a good, that's a 
a very efficient play on first down, pick up eight yards. That's what you want. It's the kind of success you want to have on first down. Move the ball forward. They haven't done a whole lot this this uh, this game, but they did it right there. And with him's a load to bring down. Inside of 40 seconds to go. Stroud back under center. Drops back, fakes the pitch, hands it off to Hutchinson, wrapped up, brought down Taylor Dubé in there on the tackle, as well as Chase Huckstein. That's the same play that they they ran for the touchdown earlier, and then they ran it uh, once again a little later on for, for a big gain, but that play, John ba on that, that time, John Bass wasn't fooled. They stayed at home, and, and they did a good job of, of making that tackle behind the line of scrimmage. And that will be the final play of the third quarter, 21-14, your score in favor of John Baps. You're watching the Page Employment Seaboard Security Game of the Week. Welcome back to Cameron Stadium for tonight's Eastern Main Class C semifinal matchup. The John Babs Crusaders and the Foxcroft Academy Ponies. Paul Withy in his 19th season as a Foxcroft head coach. Looking to get back to another Eastern Main final. Handoff to Witham. Witham looking to throw. Airs it up. That's a wobbler, it's gonna be picked up by Fogler at the 31, and John Babs will take over. And that one was just a wounded duck sitting up there waiting to come down. Well, when you've had as much as much struggles as this Foxcroft team has had on offense today, you gotta to try to, to, you know, try something, try to call a play that'll catch them off guard, a kind of a gimmick play on that time. It just wobbled out of his hands, a wet ball. And it's not even, it's usually, you know, you don't have your running back throwing the football either. So, you know, he just threw a wobbler up there, hanging up there, and then that's just a, a gift, gift wrap for uh, for John Babs on that play. And now Smith drops back to pass, looking deep. Going to pitch it off now to Weatherby at the 30, 35, breaks the tackle, diving forward, up across the 40. And if you're John Babs now, you just want to hold on to that ball, play with the clock. You, you control your own destiny now. You, exactly right. You want to try to to keep the clock running. You don't want to. You don't want any incomplete passes or anything that's going to stop the clock. But at the same time, you do want to continue to attack because it's still just a one a one score game. You do want to try to put up more points on this drive here and kind of. I think if they can do that, it'll kind of put the game away. But you just keep the clock running. Uh, smart play calling. Be smart with the football. Hand off to Weatherby again up across the 40 to about the 42. This fourth quarter is brought to you in part by Da Vinci Signs, when quality matters, located in the Pinewood Business Park, and Herman. So 11 minutes away here. John Bath in a position they've never been in. in a, well, they've been in it once, but they haven't been in it in a long time. Leading in the Eastern Main title game. And they're looking to return to that final one more time here. Handoff is to Weatherby. Going to be close to a first down. Last year's Eastern Maine champion, the Dover Fox Toss Academy Pony. Trailing now by seven with 10.34 to go here in the fourth. And last year's Eastern Maine runner-up, the John Babs Crusaders leading here in the fourth. 
Weatherby picks up another first down. He has earned every single yard that he's got today. He's, he's run tough. Even when it hasn't been there, he's, he's put his head down. He's picked up yardage. He's earned every yard he's gotten. Uh, he's a tough runner, and he's shown it this game. 10.20 to go here in the fourth. Smith fakes the handoff, looking to throw. Still looking. He's throwing to Huckstein. He's got it at the 38. So he slips and falls. Keeps his eyes on the prize and comes down with a catch there. And good job by Derek Smith. Smith actually threw that before Huckstein even made his break on the ball. He kind of anticipated Huckstein breaking open. He threw it to the area that he knew Huckstein was going to be to. It was just perfect anticipation on the part of Smith. Nice pitch and catch, and Huckstein was in the right place. Good job, and it keeps the chains moving, and he keeps the clock running, too. A little early, but I know Babs had on their calendar that Eastern Main title game circled onto the calendar after that loss to Bucksport earlier in the year. Handoff, Weatherby on the outside, 25-20, 15-10. The five, touchdown, Billy Weatherby, but nobody is celebrating for Baps. They know it's going to be a holding call. It was a, a great run <laughs> nonetheless on Weatherby's part, but this whole even this crowd was dead silent the whole time. They knew that this was coming back. Nonetheless, a, a good job by Weatherby. Even after the holding penalty, to, to break to the outside, make a, guys, a few guys miss, it was, it was a great effort. So you knew what it was going to be when you saw nobody on the back side celebrating. During the run, holding, offense, 10 yards from the spot of a foul, repeat first down. Yeah, that's gonna back him up. I don't think Weatherby's very pleased with that, with that right there, just took a touchdown away from him, a touchdown that could have sealed the deal in this game. I think he would've been more upset if it was on that 91 yarder, because <laughs> if you so. run that much, you have to have a call back. Smith in a shotgun formation, first and 19, looking to throw. Throws a quick screen pass here to Huckstein again, up across the 40. He breaks a tackle, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown back, 48 yards out. And no flags on this one this time. They score, get a, throw a flag, they come back and they score another touchdown. A great play call there. A, a perfectly executed screen pass on that play. Smith drops back, invites the defenders into the backfield, just dumps it off to, uh, I believe that was, was that Weatherby? Huckstein. Huckstein. He dumps it off to Huckstein on the play. Huckstein does, does the rest himself. Makes guys miss en route to the end zone. That could have sealed the deal there. It was a perfectly executed halfback screen pass, and, uh, and it's been, it pays off for him. So John Babs looking to extend their lead to two touchdowns here. Good snap. Kick is up, and it splits the upright. 28-14, your score. John Babs extending the lead. You're watching the Page Employment Seaboard Security Game of the Week. Welcome back to Cameron Stadium. The John Babs Crusaders opening up a lead here. 28 to 14 in this one. 9.37 to go in the fourth quarter. The Crusaders looking to get back to that Eastern Main title. But first, you're going to knock off the perennial powerhouse, Dover Foxcroft. And right now, they're on their way to doing that. Kick fielded by Hutchinson at the 15. Up across the 25. Breaks and not going to get away from that tackle. Wrapped up. Brought down by Max Andrews. Max Andrews has quietly had a uh, spectacular game. He's played great defense. He does a good job on that play uh, to, to wrap up the defender. I mean, to wrap up the, the returner on that play, a textbook tackle. And he's played great defense. He's kind of been overshadowed by some of the other guys, but he's made a lot of plays on defense, and he made a good play right there. Andrews, a six foot, two hundred pound sophomore, already has an interception in this game. And now a big open field tackle there, really breaking away another extra 10, 15 yards that they could have had on the ground. So we'll see what Paul Withy does here. He's gonna have to do something big. And Stroud's gonna hand it off to Champion. Up again, up the middle, not gonna get too much. And a, man, a guy that's been really the dominant running back here for Foxcroft, Ian Champion, 
really been held in check minus that one big run. Yeah, running up the middle is just not going to cut it at this point. You're down two scores with nine minutes left. Yeah, and with the, Coach Withy said in the opening that they were going to try to use a shotgun. It, there would be no better time than right now to start going to that shotgun. you got a guy who can throw the football. We've seen that today. Let him turn it loose a little bit. You need to put some points up. And running up the, running up the middle hasn't worked all game. There's no reason to think it's going to work now. And you've been successful twice with a stop and go route. And here we go. And Stroud slips. And down he goes. And there was heavy pressure coming in. Tyler Chamberlain, number 61, leading the charge again. Except for a few times in this game, pretty much every time Stroud has dropped back to throw the football, he's had two or three defensive linemen in his face. And you just can't, you can't have success in, in any facet of the game on offense when you get penetration and leakage in the backfield. Babs has done a good job getting into that Foxcroft backfield all game long, and it's shown because they've dominated this game defensively. And here we go. Third and 15 for Foxcroft. Stroud looking to throw, airing it up down the sideline. The pass almost intercepted by Weatherby. And that'll bring up fourth and 15 now. And he still made a, Weatherby still made a great play on that play. He didn't pick it off, but he did make a great play. And now Foxcroft has to punt. And Coach O'Connell says, I don't want my special teams out there, guys. I want my, to have my full defensive set in there, just in case they do fake it. Smith, and we have a whistle. And let's see who's taking the timeout. No official word yet. Babs will take the timeout. So Babs will take a timeout. We'll take a timeout with him. Excuse me. Foxcroft will take the timeout. So we'll take the timeout with him. 8.08 to go, fourth quarter. Babs on top, 28-14. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, today's team is being filmed for television by My Video Productions and will be televised on Time Warner Cable Channel 9, Channel 12 in Bangor. This is brought to you by Cage of Point and Seaboard Security for your enjoyment. And here we go, fourth and 15 for Foxcroft. They're going to punt it away. Smith calling for a fair catch at the 42, and he fields it cleanly. And now if you're Baps, you're eight minutes and three seconds away from going back to an Eastern Maine final once again. Just put it in cruise control. Start running the football. Don't, don't try to do too much. You've got a two-score lead here, and, you, and you've had success running it too. You've been effective on the ground, so keep going to it. It'll give you a chance to put more points up, but it'll also, more importantly, it'll keep the clock running. And right now it's not so much about points as it is about time. Time's kind of running out on Dover, so you've got to try to play into that a little bit. A little bit of history. John Babs has not won a state, has not been to a state championship game since 1976. And now they could be heading back to their second straight Eastern Maine final. Babs lining up two in the backfield. Huckstein and Weatherby hands it off. Weatherby, far side, up across the 45, breaks a tackle, hits the 50, and brought down at the 48. Bill Weatherby really has emerged in this second half as the go-to guy. He was kind of bottled up in the first half, but he stuck to it. He stuck to, uh, to uh, what's been working for him all year. He just didn't, he didn't give up on the plays. And he's, in the second half, he's really blown up, exploded with over 100 yards in the second half. Just doing a great job of running the football and being the go-to guy for the Crusaders right now. So in the first half, it was the passing game. And now in the second half, it's been all the run. Weatherby. Picks up some big blocking again. Hits the 45. The 40 still on his feet. The 35. And we have a flag come flying in. That was a... That ref threw that flag about 20 yards. That was a gun. It's going to be... Looks like a holder or a legal block in the back. Couldn't quite see the hand gesture. Let's we'll see what... That official Tim Kinney rules it. During the run, illegal block in the back. Offense 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Replay first down. So a block in the back on Baps. And that will set up a first and well, first and long here from the 45. First and 18 for Baps. Four wideouts. Weatherby in motion. 
Hands off to Hochstein, up across the 45, brought down at about the 46. So picks up about one on the play. And now Baps will come up to the line with 6.50 to go here in this one. Smith in a shotgun formation. Four wideouts now. Weatherby goes in motion. Fakes the handoff. Smith going to keep it on the outside. Passes it back to Weatherby. Weatherby breaks one tackle. Cuts back across field. Now he's got open field on this side. The 50, 45, 40. 35-30, wrapped up and brought down inside the 25. And when things look like they're going bad, Bill Weatherby turns it around and makes it good. Wow, I mean, Bill Weatherby, this second half, has just put the team, put this offense on his shoulders. And it, even when there's no play to be made, when it seems like he's, there's nothing, there's nowhere to run, he just finds a way to make a play. And on the, you saw it on the end of that run. He, he was, he was, the only reason he got tackled on the end of that run is because he is tired. And he was... He's been running this whole second half, and he has reason to be tired. He, just an outstanding individual effort by Bill Weatherby in this second half, and uh, give credit to him. He's carried this offense. Unbelievable performances by the seniors of this half team. Chase Huxley, Eric Smith, Chris Fogler, Tim Armistead, Taylor Dubé, Steve Kelly. Handoff is to Huxley again, up across the 25, brought down at the 23. Um, you know... Ian Grover, Tyler Chamberlain, Cecil Kirshner, Doug Dweevil, and A.J. Snap. A big performance by those seniors for John Babs, which has allowed them to hold a 28-14 lead here in the fourth quarter. Weatherby is taking a seat down here on the sideline, trying to catch his breath, drink some water. He's just exhausted, and the game that he has had has just been phenomenal today. Running the ball. Catching, defense, he's done it all. Absolutely. Smith keeping it near side. 25 breaks into the 20, the 15, 10, and brought down at about the nine yard line. So good carry there. Derek Smith, the senior quarterback. He's been getting some talk lately about possibly being in a Fitzpatrick Award finalist. And he, he's played like a possible Fitzpatrick Award finalist today. Yeah, I'm impressed just by the way that Smith has led. He's just a leader of this football team. He's led his team incredibly well today. He's led by example, and, and he's just done a phenomenal job in, in every aspect of his game today. He certainly, and by the way he's played today, you're right, he certainly does deserve that consideration. 4.45 to go. Bath really just can, trying to control the clock. Hand off Huckstein up the middle. Touchdown, John Bath. And that may have sealed the deal in this one. Like I said, John Baps after week one had an Eastern Main final date circled as they knew that ba Bucksport would possibly be the opponent waiting for him and they wanted to avenge that one loss an overtime loss to Bucksport, and John Baps is well on their way to taking on the Golden Bucks. The extra point up and good, and Baps on top, 35 to 14. We're gonna take a break. When we come back, Baps set to kick off. You're watching the Page Employment Seaboard Security Game of the Week. Welcome back to the Page Employment Seaboard Security Game of the Week. The John Baps Crusaders, four minutes and 40 seconds away, barring a miraculous comeback, will be heading to the Eastern Main Final for the second year in a row. 
as they lead 35-14 over the Dover Foxcroft Ponies. Bap set, kick is a good one. Fielded at the 20 by Bowden. Up across the 25, the 30, still going 35-40. Wrapped up and brought down at the 44. Now I said a miraculous comeback, but if Baps get, really puts their mind on the back burner here and looks too far, far ahead, anything can happen. Yeah, you, you mean you still got four and a half minutes left. And, and we saw earlier in this, in this uh, earlier in the second half, John Baps scored two touchdowns within about a two or three minute span, so it can happen. Foxcroft is a good team, that's why they're here, so they can certainly do it as well. You really get a, this is a point of the game where you just gotta buckle down and put them away. Put the team away when you're supposed to win. And uh, that's what John Babs has to do right now. And here we go. Stroud back to pass, looking, throwing down the field. Pass is batted, almost intercepted by John Babs. Now I do know Babs did go attend the Bucksport game last night. As they were looking forward to that. A lot of the, as you saw earlier, a lot of the Golden Bucks players of Bucksport were here as well watching this game. And you see one of the little kids here walking around, holding on to that John Bapps flag. With pride here, flashing it around as the time ticks away here. 4.28. Dover running out of time. They're going to have to do something big and quick. Stroud hands off to Witham. Witham up the middle, up across to the 50 before being wrapped up and brought down. Your John Bapps, the clock is now your friend. And that's a play that you will, you'll give up at every single time, and especially in a, in a position like this. The clock's just going to keep running. You just tick away, tick away closer to that uh, Eastern Maine final game. At this point, you you want the clock to run. If they want to run the ball, let them, because it's just going to eat the clock up. And it plays right into your hands. It's exactly what you want them to do anyway. There's the snap. The handoff is given to Robert Harmon. He's wrapped up, brought down. Smith and Huckstein on the tackle. Coach O'Connell said that they lost Tyler Chamberlain earlier in the year to a knee injury. It was a very big blow to the team because they didn't know what to expect. He was the heart and soul on the line. He came back from that knee injury, and he said it was at that point this team really regrouped with each other and really exploded back onto the scene. So... They've and you you you, you kind of said it. They've you've seen it today in this game. They've played as a team. They played incredibly well as an entire team. Not really many individuals sticking out, but but everyone on this team contributing and stepping up and doing their part in this win. And Chris Desmond with the sack again, and John Baps has forced a four and out. Desmond runs down Stroud makes a shoestring tackle and the Crusaders offense will come on the field with 2.59 to go here in the fourth quarter. So it was a third quarter that was a defensive battle. Nobody knew what to expect and then the big 91 yard run by Weatherby opened it up. And from there, it's been all Bucks, uh, has been all John Babs. And when, once Weatherby hit that 91-yard touchdown run, you kind of you kind of sense that it really deflated Foxcroft because that that put uh, that put John Babs ahead, that put him in the lead, and and really Foxcroft really was not effective at all today on offense. And they kind of knew that after that, it would have been tough to come back and play play from behind and try to win this game. But. Uh, you just got to give credit to John Bass for a team after a te whole team contributed to this win, and that's a big win for this. means a lot for this program and for this school and, this, and, this, and these fans. Delay a game called on Bass as Coach O'Connell has brought in the second string players here to get them a taste of the playoff action. Jordan Carpenter is going to be the new quarterback. He's going to hand it off to the new running back, Fred Lear. Lear is a junior. And the clock will just tick away here. 2.40 to go. John Bath will head to its second straight Eastern Main Final. And this time they knock off the perennial powerhouse, a team that's been there seven consecutive years in that Eastern Main Final. Three times in a row they have won the Eastern Main Final, the Dover Foxcroft Academy Ponies. 
So if you're John Bapps, this is really your significant, this is your, you know, significant win of the year right here. And we need to give credit to Foxcroft as well. Uh, that just to make it th at this point in the year that they've built a program that's really been the, me the, the measuring point for every other program in this conference so far, making it to seven straight Eastern Main games. Obviously, they're going to fall short in this game, but, you know, a 6-3 and three season coming into this game, that's a success. They have a, with he's built a great program there, and they've done a good job of uh, fighting. And they're not, they, they didn't really give up this game. They just kind of got overmatched, but uh, they fought hard, and they're, they're still a good program, and you got to give credit to them. They, they've played well. they played their hearts out, and, you know, to any time you make it this far in the playoffs, you know your season's been, su been a success. 1.38 to go in this one. Running on the near side is Carpenter. Up across the 50, brought down at the 48. Tackle there made by Stetson Bowden. And we have a whistle and a timeout. And it's going to be timeout on Foxcroft's side. So with that whistle, we'll take a timeout too. 122 to go. Baps 35, Foxcroft 14. You're watching the Page Employment Seaboard Security Game of the Week. Welcome back to Cameron Stadium. The John Babs Crusaders a minute and 22 away from wrapping this one up. On top 35, 14 in this one. Good snap, fake punt. Airing it up down the field. Huckstein's got it. The 25, the 20, 15, the 10, the five. Touchdown back. Unbelievable. And John Babs is now on top. 41 was that 14. Was that yeah. Weatherby who threw it? Smith with the throw. Was it Smith? All right. Well, that was a, nonetheless, that was an absolutely perfect throw by Smith. He threw that on a rope. That was a BB showing off his arm strength on that play. And give credit to Huckstein. He made a great play. He made a good catch in traffic to go up and get that. Made a bunch of guys miss. And he want, you could tell he wanted to get into the end zone there. It meant a lot for him to score on that play. He wanted to get in. He did. And, uh, you know. This is an unbelievable play. I don't, I don't know what to say. John Knapp is sending this signal to Bucksport. Next, you better be prepared next week because they're coming to play. On now for the extra point. That's a gutsy call. If that if that play if that play doesn't work out, if that backfires, you know that that makes John Babs look kind of kind of bad on that play. And they're going for two. And they just throw this one away as it was a high snap. You know, just think if that play backfires and you, you, you're just left questioning why it happened. You know, you don't know why they would call it if it backfires. You, know, you don't know why they call it anyway. There was no need for it. But, you know, it just, it's just the way the game's going. Everything's going John Bapp's way. And you just saw that, was, that play kind of sums up how this whole game has gone. John it's, Bapp's put the exclamation point on this one. 109 to go. We'll take a break. Baps 41, Foxcroft 14. You're watching the paid employment Seaboard Security Game of the Week. Welcome back to the Page Employment Seaboard Security Game of the Week. The John Babs Crusaders on top of this one, 41 to 14, in a game that actually was a lot closer than this scoreboard shows. 14-14 going into the end of the third quarter with a late touchdown by Babs. They've just exploded for points here in the fourth. 
Kickoff return still going on his feet at the 45, the 40 is Bowden, the 40, 30, 20, the 10, and he's gonna take it all the way in for a touchdown, and that one makes it a 41-21 game, or 20 game, I should say. Yeah, good job by Boat on that. I mean, I didn't really see how he broke free from that. He kind of he kind of emerged from a cluster of bodies there to to score, and he, just a good job getting into the end zone there. Nice, be beautiful return by Stetson Bowden on that play. And it, there's a certain level of uh, you know satisfaction with that. I mean, the game is a lost cause, but to, you kind of said that Babs was trying to put the exclamation point in this game and end it that way. Well, now now Foxcroft comes out and they score the last touchdown. So. It, a slight, slight gratification, but I mean, the game is lost, but <laughs> it's a touchdown either way. You'll take it, I guess. And now, Foxcroft will get set for the two point conversion. A pitch to Richard. Richard at the five. The th <laughs> and it's a two point <laughs> conversion. Wow. And this has been just quite the, uh, quite the battle here. This has been a very entertaining game. Very entertaining. And with that, we're going to take a break. You're watching the Page Employment Seaboard Security Game of the Week. the Page Employment Seaboard Security Game of the Week. The Dover Foxcroft Academy Ponies on down in this one, 41-22, an onside kick. That ball's gonna go 10 yards, it did go 10 yards. <laughs> Do Dover's got it. And it, I think Dover's got it. That ball went 10 yards. Well, that's a, the refs, I don't the know refs about The refs are that saying call. no, but that ball, when they picked it up, that was across the 50 yard it line. absolutely was. Um, I don't know. I, I don't think that's the right call at all. The, I think our camera up here got that one. That when they recovered that, that ball was at the 50-yard line, yep. which was a 10-yard kick. And let's see which offense comes out here. It's going to be the second string. This, the second string will come back out there for John Baps. They do have some of the big offensive guns in there as well, though, or some of the offensive line, I should say. At 51.2, you pretty much could just take a knee. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. Two knees will end this thing, enough and is they enough will. At this point. And a flag on the play. <laughs> well, let's see what the flag is. There's six guys on illegal formation. Only six men on the line of scrimmage. Five yard penalty. <laughs> Tim Kinney, get help but laugh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know you have, it's a good game when you can get that penalty and you have the refs laughing about it. And the buckets are getting ready to go on to Coach O'Connell possibly? No. They're dumping him on the sideline. I'm a little bit surprised. That's a waste. That is a waste of water to just dump on it. you got to dump that on your coach. you got to dump that on the coach. you just got a playoff win. You can't dump that water out. And there's the knee. you got to put that on the coach. Inside. Uh, 30 seconds. Maybe they're saving it for next week. Maybe. Maybe. But it's a big win for this team anyway. I mean, this is a huge win for the John Babs Crusaders. Getting back to where they were last year. Now they have a chance to kind of make up for, and kind of, you know, make up for last year's when they lost. Well, that will do it from up here. We'll go down to the field to wrap this one up. John Babs, the big win. 41-22 over the Foxcroft Academy Ponies. We'll see you down on the field after this.
High School Football, brought to you by Page Employment and Seaboard Security. I see Lucas Thomas is ready with the starting John Baps Crusader defense. Let's head down and join Luke. We're joined now by the entire defensive unit of the John Babs Crusaders, a, a unit that really stifled Foxcroft all, all game long. Right now, I'm just going to let you guys introduce yourselves to the, to the uh, camera. Uh, Chase Huckstein, middle linebacker. Bill Weatherby, cornerback. Go ahead and pass that down. Just grab it. Douglas Gervois, defensive tackle. Chris Vogler, free safety. Derek Smith, defensive back. Tyler Chamberlain, defensive tackle. Don't forget me. Steve Kelly, nose tackle. Dante Parks. Chris Desmond, D tackle. Taylor Doobie, defensive end. Tim Armstead, outside linebacker. Max Andrews, defensive end. Shane Haas, outside linebacker. Grab this mic. Chris, we'll start with you. Uh, I just want to ask you a few questions. You had a few big sacks today, but really your defensive line as a whole unit really dominated this whole game up front. Just talk about that effort a little bit. Uh, we were all really psyched up all game right from the beginning. We got a lot of good penetration and got in their heads from the start. Uh, we'll go to you now, Derek. On offense, you guys, kind of the, the tail of the first half, you guys had a lot of success through the air. Second half, you guys came, kind of came out and established yourself on the ground. But uh, talk about what you were able to do on offense. You know, uh, me personally, you know, we got, we got a few things done. I got down. At, my team picked me up here. It's the best thing they can do is pick me back up and uh, won't be two bad games in, in the playoffs. So be looking forward to the next game. Uh, Bill, we'll go to you now. Um, this game was tied up going in late into the third quarter until you broke that 91-yard run. But I know in the booth we were talking about how that was really that really that play itself really exemplified you guys as a team. You had about four offensive linemen running down the field with you the whole way, blocking, uh, working hard. Yeah, working hard to get you into the end zone there. Just talk about that. That was kind of the turning point of the game. After that, you guys were kind of in cruise control. Yeah. Well, in the locker room, coach just came up to me and asked me what I was seeing, and I'm like. I'm, I'm seeing the counter. It's right there. We need to run that. And then when we did that, the line was with me the whole 90 yards. Well, guys, it was a great effort, a great team effort all around, and congratulations and good luck next week. Here we have a nice shot of Coach Dan O'Connell and his first son, who's named Matt. Matt's named after Dan's brother. It's Matt Jerome O'Connell, and Jerome is after Matt's wife's, Jessica's dad. He was also named Jerome. Looks like Adam Mahaney is ready for us. Let's throw it down to Adam as he talks with Coach Dan O'Connell and perhaps assistant coach Matt. We're now joined by a victorious head coach, Coach O'Connell. Looks like you're joined by a happy trooper as well. Yeah, he's, he's excited. I don't think he really knows exactly what's going on, but he's excited. Coach, talk about the first half. It was a strong defensive battle. You guys went into the locker room at 14. Third quarter comes out. You guys are playing neck and neck, and then all of a sudden Weatherby breaks that big run. Yeah, you know, we, we had him pinned down in, in their end for a while and had a couple chances with not a lot of yardage to go to score. They didn't take advantage of it, and when they broke the big run down the other way and swung the momentum, you, you start to feel that sense of urgency a little bit, and you're wondering, geez, how are we going to make up the field position and first get a stop? We, we did that, and then Billy just, he's Billy, and he made it, you know, the, the line was out front of him blocking for him, and they were downfield with him too, but... It was an amazing run and an amazing play made at, at, I don't know if there was a bigger time in the game that he could have made a play, and I'm really proud of him. Talk about that run more, though. It was the offensive line that was down here blocking for him. Usually when it's that far of a run, you're usually seeing the wide receivers there, but in this case it was the offensive line, and they were directing traffic, tell them to come this way. Sure. It was a great job by that O-line. Well, yeah, and it's a testament to those kids because all week long, the O-line coaches you know, made sure that those kids were getting downfield after a pass play and on a run play and trying to make something happen. And it's a testament to those kids to, to, to you know, do what you're taught and get downfield and try to make a play. Talk about the defense. Defense played extraordinary today. I mean, gave up 14 points in the in the first half and then pretty much pitched a shutout the rest of the way. Sure. I mean, we, we gave up a couple touchdowns and one on a counter play where we just didn't honor our responsibilities and chase the ball a little bit too much. And then Derek got beat over the top on a double move. Other than that, we, we did a great job of hanging in there. Um, they were, I think they were trying to take the air out of the ball a little bit and try to stay on offense as, as long as possible, as long as they were successful. And, we did a good job of just sticking with it one play at a time and, and got enough, you know, turnovers. In the first half, they faked the punt, and you, you wonder, geez, you know, where is the will? And then in the second half, they come out, and we get a little bit, bit of momentum, and, and they, they were able to stem the tide and hold them down. 
I'm sure at the end of the first week, you guys had on your calendar another date where you guys would possibly meet Bucksport again. What have the kids thought about all season long after that one loss to Bucksport? Have you guys thought at all about when will you guys meet them again? Well, we talked all season long, not necessarily about Bucksport, but putting yourself in a position to be where you want to be in November. And we tried to you know, keep it one day at a time. Uh, one game at a time, but the, the kids are they're high school kids, and, and, and they, I think they were looking ahead to this in a sense that they would be happy if they got another chance. I don't think they looked by anybody, but I think they knew that at some point the road was going to have to go through F.A. if we wanted a chance to get to Foxcroft, and when we talked before the game today, we talked about putting yourself in a position to be a champion in November, and I told him if we if we got this win next week, we'll play for a championship. And, and, the, and the kids responded, I just couldn't be more proud of them. All right, Coach. Well, congratulations. And next week, it's Bucksport. Once again, congratulations to the John Babs Crusaders on winning the Eastern Maine Class C semifinal. And now the seniors are going to take their traditional last lap around the field. And here they go with their lap, being congratulated by fellow teammates. Really being a senior on any team in any program, well worth it. Take a look there down on the field. We can see several fans all congratulating John Babs on this huge win for their program. And again, they'll move on to the Eastern Maine final. We're now taking a look at the seniors getting a one last photo together, which I'm sure will be a memory they'll be able to keep for a long time. Let me share with you now the seniors in the group here on the John Babs Crusader 2008 football team. Seniors on the team are Chase Huckstein, Derek Smith, Chris Fogler, Tim Armistead, Taylor Dubé, Steve Kelly, Ian Grover, Tyler Chamberlain, Cecil Kirshner, Doug Duville, and A.J. Snap. Those are your seniors on the Crusader team, and they're joined in the photo by coaches Dan O'Connell, Matt O'Connell, Chad Bazinet, Daryl Parks, and Aaron Smith. That wraps up a post game here this afternoon. Once again, your final score of the John Babs Crusaders 41, Foxcroft Academy Ponies 22. Let's head back up to Adam and Luke to wrap up today's game. Lucas, John Babs heading back to their second straight Eastern Maine final, and tonight beating a perennial powerhouse in Dover Foxcroft. Big win for John Babs. Yeah, anytime you win a playoff game, it's a huge win, but uh, beating a team that beat you last year in the playoffs has to make it that much more sweet. And this is a, this team that really dominated the whole game. It, it was a close game most of the way, but they really had the upper hand. It was no question that this was the better football team all game long. Now they have a chance to prove next week that uh, they belong in the state final game. And the way they played today, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they end up there. Well, strong running usually leads to success, and they had a great job passing. But like I said, up in the booth, offense can win games, but it's the defense that wins championships. And today, the defense for Babs just played played phenomenal. Absolutely. The offense put a lot of points up, but it was a defense that won this game for them. The defensive line dominated all game long. Dover Foxcroft couldn't get anything going on the ground game. They had some success in the air, but not a whole lot. Whenever they tried to run the ball and tried to get to their base offense, just Babs just wouldn't allow it to happen, and that was why they won the game. Well, the seniors of John Babs getting their final farewell here at Cameron Stadium. And after this win, John Babs heading to the Eastern Maine final. Once again, your final, John Babs winning the Eastern Maine semifinal over Dover Foxcroft. You've been watching the Page Employment Seaboard Security Game of the Week. <laughs>